coming to the green flag, racing at Daytona. Chevrolet run with Chevrolets, Fords with Fords, and only six Toyotas out there, but they're supposed to work together as well. They're definitely outnumbered today. You see right there, Denny Hamlin's trying to push Kyle Busch, has that car all set to the right side of him. That's the exact proper way to do it. He's pushing him a lot. Right here on the roof cam, the Coca-Cola roof cam, Denny Hamlin's car. They are pushing quite a bit here. Temperature's not quite peaked on these cars just yet. They will after another lap or so. I think the only way he could be pushing like that is Kyle has got to be dragging a brake off the gas or something to let him stay connected like that. You see a move. Coming out of line, Ryan Blaney in the 12. Looked like he was going to go to the inside. Ryan Blaney drives a Ford. So right now he's following two Toyotas looking for an opening in that bottom line where there are three Fords lined up on the bottom. And look at Denny Hamlin coming to pit road. He's wheel hopping them rear tires, locking them rear brakes up, trying to downshift and get himself slowed down for pit road speed. Hey guys, I'm telling you, it's not just the pit road entry that was an issue for the 11. This was a great save, but he is only one pit to my left. And when he came by here, the left front tire completely locked up. So much so that a crew member looked at it during the gas and go. It's not a wear issue. I'm concerned that left front on the 11 may be flat spotted. We have seen tires not make it because of that here before. We'll have to keep an eye on that 11 car. So here's the problem with everybody pitting at the same time. You see what happened to Eric Amarola? He couldn't get in his pit box. There's so many people on pit road at the same time, and he's way back there. He's in 33rd, way back, lost the draft. That is the negative to everybody pitting together. Somebody is going to get left out. One more time around for stage one. It has been a Ford-dominated stage. Logano led 34 laps. Kevin Harvick has led 12 laps. And now they dive to the bottom. And the Fords went to the bottom. Some of the Fords went to the bottom. Some of them couldn't go to the bottom. Brad Keselowski so, stuck in the middle here. Yeah, so Kevin Harvick did what he had to do. He couldn't worry about all those Fords. That's what he should have done. Look here at comes Stenhouse in the 17 Stenhouse. with a run. He's going to push the 22. Logano fighting for this stage win as he pulls in front of the four, and now he'll start to block. Logano in front of the 17, coming out of turn four. Oh, contact behind them. Here. And Joey Logano will win stage one at Daytona. That was a stage, and all bets were off on the back straightaway between manufacturers and teammates. Chase is kind of like he's behind enemy lines here. He wants to kind of stay up there, not ruffle any feathers, not do anything that's going to get him shuffled to the middle. Which means he's just going to have to block. He's going to have to look in his mirror, drive as if it's the last few laps of the race to make Ryan Blaney stay with him. He does have a good friend in Blaney. Off of the track. As long, yeah. <laughs> as long as he don't give Blaney any real good excuses. Oh, and look, now that is. went ahead and just decided to go with manufacturing. I can't believe it. There's more help coming, though. There's help coming. They ain't got any choice but to push him. They don't want to push him long, though. So Blaney got out of line, and now Chase Elliott's looking for friends, but he doesn't have any that are very close to him yet. You saw that red and black car, the 41, so Suarez behind Elliott. He went way up the racetrack. Wow, 48 made a huge move. Jimmy Johnson made a huge move right there. Got underneath Truex. Oh, he turns him sideways. Oh, my God. He ain't lifting. He is not lifting. I cannot believe Thursday, that save. He wasn't going to lift. Watch the, watch the hands of Harvick. What? Are you kidding me? I'm not oh, lifting today. 17, Stenhouse Jr. was in front of the one of Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch didn't lift, and around went Stenhouse. Into the grass he goes, caution comes out. Yeah, it's a good thing you went through that grass backwards. But the 17 car at the top trying to block the one here. Kurt Busch, he's got a huge run coming down the racetrack. Then he gets a little tight right there. Kurt says, not today. I'm not going to lift. He didn't. Around goes the 17 of Stenhouse Jr., and the caution comes out. 
It's Clint Boyer who has chosen the outside line. Austin Dillon will be on the inside line. Back up to speed. 38 laps to go in stage two. One of the things that could come into play and fuel mileage. Got a couple of Chevrolets on that inside trying to work together. They hadn't really been able to form this plan that they've had if they work so well with Talladega. Because it's been all fours up front. Let's see how it works out this time. Two Chevrolets working together. Austin Dillon and Chase Elliott. And now everyone else jockeying for position behind them. And the one of Kurt Busch. He's Elliot able to save it, but you have damage to the left front of that car. And the caution has come out once again. We're going into turn one. He's out there by himself. Tight into the fence. Into the wall. Has problems down in turn three. Eventually spin it out. There he goes. Good save by Kurt Busch. He'll bring it in. Try to get tires on that car and get back in action. Brad Kozlowski has had to work to get his way back up through the field. And here's the problem with not communicating what you're going to do on the stop. Brad Kozlowski came in. They called a code word for the stop. He thought oh, it was. Oh, he got into the wall. He got pushed into the wall. And now Brad Kozlowski and others are sliding behind him. There goes the 38 of David Reagan making contact. Now they go into the infield grass as well. Brad looked like he was had a handful of race car off the of turn four. Looked like he was getting a little bit loose off turn four and having a hard time with that race car. Daniel Hemrick, there you see the eight of Hemrick making a left turn to go back to pit road. The 41 of Suarez also involved. A lot of damage to the two of Keselowski. Let's see how this started right here. Down. Oh, he gets a big push from the four. And that just turned him. He hit the four hit him pretty hard. And Brad just lost control of the car. Turn Brad into the outside wall really hard. Here's a great, great shot with Kevin Harvick. Oh, man, it really isn't that hard of a hit. It looked like he was just trying to get Brad moving. Unreal, and it doesn't take anything to get these cars out of control and out of the driver's hands. Austin Dillon on the inside in the number three. Clint Boyer on the outside in the 14. Now under three laps to go. Keep a reminder, we got weather very close. Lightning in the area. This could be for the win. These guys know it. They continue side by side. Chevy on the inside, Ford on the outside. Big push on the outside lane right there from Stenhouse. Clint doesn't quite clear Austin. Oh, I thought he was going to clear and get in the corner. He couldn't do it. Now it gets difficult as they get two by two for that inside line to keep those cars, keep the momentum up. They're getting tight. They're getting bound up, pinched down on the bottom groove by that outside line. Bowman and Chase Elliott, all those guys trying to push but getting tight. Cars not handling. That outside line has the momentum, but Austin Dillon breaks through. Surging ahead. Now will he start to block? Will he dictate which line? Will he go to the high side with just two laps to go? And think how bad these guys behind him in the fifth and sixth row. Think about how bad those cars are driving right now with all that air off of them. Another run coming from Boyer right here. Another surge out of the 17 to give the 14 a shove. If the 14 gets a run, Byron has to pull up in front of it and block it. You have to try to take an opportunity here with a white flag out in the stage. One more time around for stage two. Austin Dillon, Alex Bowman, William Byron, Chase Elliott, the top four. And they're starting to pull away from that outside line. Jordano had to go up and do a huge block on Denny Hamlin. That's going to hurt that surge from the outside lane. Austin Dillon, a little bit of a draft off that car. Might help him a little bit, keep these guys from getting a run. They're pulling away. Does anybody get out of line and try to take the win away from Austin Dillon of these four? Through three and four for the final time in stage two. Exiting four. They're all in line. Dillon. Then Bowman and Byron. Dillon's going to win the stage. Who knows?
when weather could be an issue. The crew members getting these guys back out in these positions. Logano and Newman making up row one. Behind them, Eric Jones, Austin Dillon. Back up through the gears they go. Oh, I thought Newman could squeeze in there behind the 22. Couldn't quite get there. Austin Dillon with a big push. I don't know if Newman is in the four meetings. I don't, I don't know. You know, he's on his own plan here. You're looking at Newman, Austin Dillon, Eric Jones, all those guys up there. A win today gets them into the playoffs. They're right now all outside the playoff picture. You saw the three push of the six. The reason he couldn't keep doing that is a 22 side draft, and he pulled him off of the six. Look at this run Austin Dillon's got. Big run by the three of Austin Dillon. He had a push from the 24. He's out front and controlling this race again. And there was no way the six of Duma could block that. I was going to say, veteran <laughs> move yes. by a guy that knows that is a waste of time to try to block that. That's a good way to get yourself turned around. Only 43 laps to go. The Monster Energy Cup Series Coke Zero Sugar 400. And slow on the track is the four of Kevin Harvick. Will he be able to get to the apron? He does. Can he stay out of the line as the racing continues? Austin Dillon up oh, oh, it's shifted oh, him out. Gonna be a big and one. now around goes the three in front of the pack. They're all collected. The 11 with damage, the 22 as well. Big right here. Smoke rolling out of the cars that even cleared this incident. They shuffled out. The 11 of Denny Hamlin, and then while trying to regroup, the three of Austin Dillon gets around. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 17, major damage. A lot of good cars in this wreck. Chris Buescher in the 37, also the 18 of Kyle Busch. Anytime you see a guy get turned around entering a corner, he's going up across the track. It's going to take a lot of guys with it. That's just the, one of the worst places, if not the worst place, to get turned. And we, it's the blocking. The blocking we've talked about all weekend. The racing was intense, but it all started right here. The Chevy, the three of Austin Dillon changed lanes. He tries to make a move on the Toyota, loses momentum, blocks the 14. Now he's helping a Ford. I think he panics. What does he do? He goes back to the bottom, or does he block the 14? The 14 makes a move. The three blocks, you said it time and time again, blocking causes accidents. This is an accident at the front of the field. Yeah, it looks like Clint Boyer's pushing the three, but he moves to go inside, and that upset the three a little bit. Got the three a little bit loose, but the three headed on down the track to try to block anyways, to try to get down there and protect that line, protect that lead. Let's, look, let's go back and look at that first view, because I think that, watch this first view. So right here, he makes the move, as he said. Here comes the 14 of Boyer. Good side draft on the 11. Here comes the 14 of Boyer. Now we got a great shot. Boyer gets into the back of him. He goes to turn left just a little bit, and when he did, he drug the three with him. The three's on the bottom of the racetrack. You know, yeah. I don't know that that was a block. It I think wasn't. the three got there. He didn't mean to get there. It's just no. a little bit of contact. When the when Clint goes across the back bumper of that three, it turned the three sideways. It yeah. upset the back of that three car. So it's Haley in the 77 and McDowell in the 34. They're making up row one. But again, we went back to caution. They're not going to come to green here. So, so listen, the one car and, and, you know, with, with those guys, they made a great call. Kurt Busch, Matt McCall made a call, right? They're going to stay on the racetrack. But NASCAR gave one to go. They said, we're coming to one to go. So that means they think the race is going to restart. So the one car comes down pit road. NASCAR goes one to go, then down to back straightaway. Conditions change. They get a lightning strike. They take, they call it off. So right now, Matt McCall is like, man, I, I was in the right position. You gave one to go. Why'd you give one to go? You know he's upset with that call to change it and then say, hey, we're going back caution. And so now the pace truck is going to bring the field back onto pit road. And we'll go to Marty. And Kurt Busch, Rick, is livid on the radio. Take a listen to what he had to say. Got the news of the century. Yep. 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 They took one away from me in 2014 as well. That's him processing the information that you just laid down, Jeff, that after they pitted, they called off the restart, and they made that decision based on the one-to-go call that you mentioned. So, Kurt Busch, not very happy with NASCAR's decision here. There's your winner. He's being told right <laughs> now. Getting ready to go. Justin Haley has won his first ever 
Monster Energy Cup Series yeah, race. That was awesome, man. Thank you know you. What I mean? I didn't do anything. I know. Uh, <laughs> I did nothing. You stayed up front all day. Yeah. You kept, got back yeah. really loud. You got yourself in the spot. That's what music, you know. I let you all right, bro. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you, buddy. What a family moment, Todd Braun. We mentioned him a moment ago. He's the one who really propelled all this. Owned Xfinity Series cars for nine years. But you, young man, as you just said a moment ago, I'm just a dirt racer from Indiana. You are a Monster Energy Cup Series winner. Can you believe it? It's uh, it's absolutely a blessing. It's uh, pretty incredible that I have so many great people around me um, that have given me this opportunity to come and uh, to this level and, and the stage that that we're performing on. Uh, obviously, Todd and my family have done a great job, but the Fraternal Order of Eagles, everyone to FOE, has, has given me this opportunity to inspire motorsports. Um, it, it's truly a blessing. I, I never even saw myself running a cup race and, <laughs> until I got a call a few months ago to, to do Talladega. Um, and it, it's, it's just unreal. I, I don't know how to feel.